This video is brought to you by premiumbeat.com. In this After Effects video, we're gonna create some loopable shape-based tunnels inside of After Effects, so stay tuned. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film and welcome to our channel. So a couple years ago, I actually did this tutorial where we created a loopable tunnel, but you know, over the course of years, I've learned some new techniques and I wanted to revisit this concept because there are quite a handful of uses for this. So perhaps you're doing like a lyric video, you need a nice you know, custom background or explainer video or an intro. Uh, there's a lot of artistic style that goes along with creating a loopable tunnel effect inside of After Effects. It's very easy to use and there's a lot of neat ideas that we'll take a look at in this video. So of course, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And before we jump into tutorial, I wanna say thank you to Premium Beat for sponsoring this video. Premium Beat is a royalty-free music provider for your creative video and motion graphic projects. They have an extremely popular library with thousands of songs to choose from, and they have a very easy in-depth search and menu filter system that allows you to quickly find the best songs for your video. So for your next video project, be sure to check out premiumbeat.com for your royalty-free music. Let's do it. So here we are in our main composition, and the only thing I have in here is a background, not needed. Um, so what we'll do here is we'll come here to the top and we'll grab one of our shapes. So in my case, I'm just gonna grab the polygon tool because you got a lot of options with it. Just Use whatever you want to use. All right, and come here to fill. Make sure that's set to none and click OK. And click on the word stroke, set it to solid color and click OK. Come here, change the color to whatever color you want. I'll do like a nice, you know, light blue, click OK. And, you know, we'll set the stroke count to, you know, 30. And we'll hold down Shift on keyboard and we'll draw out a polygon like this. All right, cool. Then what we need to do is come here to the line tab here on the right and to center this up. Boom. Then we need to find the pan behind tool here at the top. Control double click it and that anchor point will be in the center. So that just makes it a little bit more clean to work with. And now what we can do is start creating a loopable, you know, repeatable background. And it's very easy to do. And before we duplicate this, I want to add one little effect to it. So what we'll do here is come here to add and we'll add a repeater. Okay. We'll open up repeater one and We'll go to transform repeater one and we'll see the position here. Here's the X position, set it to zero. Then let's decrease the scale to maybe 70%. All right, awesome. Then let's increase the number of copies to as many as you want. And this is really where you're gonna be able to have an infinite tunnel. So, you know, if you only have a few copies, you're not gonna have an infinite tunnel, but if you, you know, really punch this up to 100 to 200, you're gonna have almost limited copies and you can just adjust it as you need. Then we'll come here to the anchor point because we gotta center this correctly. The anchor point will allow us to directly visually center this. And of course you can get unique with that, but we'll have this centered because why not? All right, awesome. It's definitely starting to hurt my eyes a little bit, but we'll go ahead and work on this. And I'll should come back here and set the scale down to like 60%. The lower the scale, the more separation you'll have between the next you know, object and that's important. So I wanna animate this to come towards us. So to animate this to come towards us, we'll add a keyframe for offset. And we'll move forward to the end of our animation. I'll just say seven seconds for our case. And we can set this to the negative value. So we'll do like negative like five or six, depending on how fast you want this to go. You know, obviously the higher the offset value, the faster it will travel. And that's a good speed. And what we do here is maybe increase the rotation and this will make it a little bit unique. And obviously it will animate with that rotation. So it's trying to get you know, kind of trippy. Cool, and we come here to add, and we can also add a trim pass because I want to start customizing this a little bit and make the animation a little bit unique. So we'll open up trim pass one, we'll come here to begin our timeline, and we'll set the start to 100%, add a keyframe for it, move forward maybe by a second or so, and set it down to 0%. And nice. And then what we can do here is make both of our keyframes easy, ease keyframes, and maybe increase it. Then what we can do, if we want to add, say, more shapes to this, and we can you know, add a number of shapes if you want. So I'm gonna come here and turn off our polystar in the shape layer and grab the pen tool here at the top. And I'm gonna click a point and draw a straight line like this. And wow, don't worry about it. We'll come here to the shape one and we'll come here to transform and we'll, you know, move the position over and we can increase the, uh, the Y position. And then we'll wanna center this as best we can. And then what we'll do here is come here to the top and bring down the stroke count by a little bit. And we'll just change the color here. Do like a, a red, that's cool. And we'll turn our polystar back on down here. And we'll come here to the anchor point for our shape one. And we'll wanna you know, get this kind of centered in there. So we know we have this in the tunnel. And then let's come here to the beginning of our timeline, add a keyframe for rotation and move to the end. And we'll increase the rotation. 
do something like that. That's cool. And with these techniques and with a little bit of adjusting, um, this is currently what we have. And it's just, you know, it's in there. It's looking a little bit cool and all. All right. And just with a little bit of adjusting, this is what we have. And you can get really creative and unique with this. And it's really up to you what type of shapes you want to use and what animation. But now the good part of the tutorial, because right now it's just a weird shape. We got to really just, you know, make this come to life. And it's very easy to do this. So we'll come here to effect and we're going to add stylize glow. We'll set the glow threshold to 100 and we'll increase the glow radius to like 17. And then set the glow intensity to 2. Now let's go ahead and duplicate this effect and then increase the glow radius to like 100 and bring down the glow threshold by a little bit. All right, cool. Then let's go up to layer new adjustment layer and let's go to effect noise and grain and let's add noise. We'll set the noise to like 12%, actually it's to 14% and uncheck use color noise. And nice. Now we're starting to look really good here and very like retro-y, you know, neon glow. It looks nice. But one thing that bothers me is that all the way back here, it's in focus, right? So like this is all a sharp image and I want to be able to make the, you know, the, at least the back end part of this seem more out of focus, create a little bit of depth of field, right? However, this is not a 3D layer. And even when we make it a 3D layer, it's still not really a 3D layer. So we can't add a camera and blur out the background. However, there's a little bit of a solution to this. So we're gonna come here to effect blur and sharpen and we're gonna add camera lens blur. This is a great effect. Now it blurs out everything initially, but we're gonna set the blur map from layer to the uh, poly layer to the shape layer that we're using. And it's gonna you know keep some of it out of focus, which is fine for this technique, but the background is more out of focus than the foreground, which is great. And if you want, you can increase the blur focal distance and it'll blur out the background even more. We'll set that to 255. And there you have it, man. And you can uh, increase the blur radius a little bit if you want. You can set it to 10 if you want to do that or a little bit more. Completely up to you. But in my case, I just want this to be at 3. I don't want to have it too intense. Definitely, like, if you look down here, this is with camera lens blur. That's without it. And just, you know, makes it seem more out of focus. And it pops into focus as it, you know, comes towards us. And that's great. And one thing I want to want to do is turn on motion blur for this, obviously. And I want to add another cool effect. So we'll create a new adjustment layer. And we'll go to effect distort and we're gonna add optics compensation and we'll check on reverse uh, lens distortion and increase the field of view to like 80 this will warp the composition towards our eyes and I think that is really really cool so boom a little before and after that's awesome so overall we're looking pretty cool but I think with this type of composition you're gonna to want to add some more third-party assets or at least in my opinion just to make this even more stylized so and I added some particles to really just take this to the next level and it just adds a lot of level of detail to this. So you can add like lens flares, light leaks, or any other third party, you know, asset that you think will make this look better. It's up to you. But to me, just adding a little bit more detail to it, just mm, may take this to the next level. Now, one other effect I want to do just to, I don't know, just make this pop a little bit more is create an RGB effect. It's really easy to do, requires no third party plugins. And you probably have seen this effect before if you have watched my videos. Now, we'll come here and we'll go to layer, pre-compose course make sure all your layers were selected before you do that and we'll just call it all perfect now so what we'll do here is go to effect channel and we're gonna add shift channels and then we'll set green to full off nice okay we're done just kidding set blue to full off great now we're done no okay go to edit duplicate so you duplicate your layer here turn off red set that to full off Go to green, set it to green. Perfect. Duplicate your layer down here in the timeline. So you have three copies here. Set the green to full off. Go to blue and set it to blue. All right. Then select the two top layers. Toggle switch the modes until you see the blend mode here. And set them to screen, the two top layers. Now it's back to normal. Great. Now what we'll do here is we'll grab any of these layers. It can be all of them if you want. But we'll just hit P on the keyboard for position. And we'll slightly, well, just to show you real quick, boom, now you get RGB splitting. Great. But we'll slightly adjust it. I don't want too much. I just think a little bit is just going to, you know, make it so nice. You know, that's beautiful. And you can even do like another layer here. So we can do the top layer, offset it by a little bit. See, that's beautiful. So a little before and after. You know, I don't know if you can see that so well on YouTube, but it just, it just adds an extra nice touch to it. Like, especially for this scene. It's beautiful. So, so here's what we have with all our effects added to it. And I think there's just a lot of value in this and a lot of fun to do this type of work and things that get me excited about After Effects. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful 
and are able to use this technique in your future projects. If you liked what you saw in this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sunduck Film, because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description. And always, be creative.